Nathan Blake, sir, how are we doing? You okay? Yeah, it's not too bad, thank you, G. Not too bad at all. But all yeah. the better for seeing you in your DA, mate. Yeah, hey, it's nice to see you too. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm liking the goatee strongly. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's called something different to look at every uh, every couple of weeks in the mirror. So yeah, you know, I've just changed the appearance. There's not much I can do with my hair, mate, because I just keep it <laughs> shaved off. So I've uh, turned it upside down and gone with the beard. And like yourself. Yeah, hey, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been with the tools out as well. So yeah, I can see. Before, before coronavirus, did, did you shave your own head anyway, or did you go to the barbers to get it done? No, mate, I haven't been to the barbers for, I think, the last time, honestly, I went to a barber was when I got married, um, which is 20 years ago. Uh, um, I've shaved my own head since, since that, I've kept it just, just skinned over. Uh, yeah. And I used to cut, I cut my two boys' hair up until they were probably 15 and started going to the barber. So uh, me, and my, me and my best mate, Kevin, used to learn to cut hair on each other. And, yeah. <laughs> you can open a shop. There's nothing yeah, you can't do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, my youngster's happy because um, he's 17 and uh, he's got a bit of bum fluff coming across his chin and his moustache and his sideburns and what have you, but he's got the old funky dreads. So I give him a, a short back and sides. What was it last week? I think it was, but I, I give him a like design uh, sideburns and all that and shape yeah. up his mustache and that. So made him look pretty. So he's buzzing. Yeah, hey, you're a talented man, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, no, you are, definitely. I mean, look at the mess I made in my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's good effort, though. <laughs> no, it's not. It's poor, it's poor. <laughs> um, how are you finding lockdown, then? Are you coping? Yeah, mate, it is. Listen, it's, it's just every, you know, a Monday is a Wednesday and Wednesday is a Sunday. Um, I just... Uh, being a laid back character, I suppose it helps in these situations. Um, you just slip into, you know, whatever you got to do mode, you know, try not to think about what day it is. Um, try not to get the old anxiety going with, or when we're coming out and what we're going to do. And when's everything going to be back to normal? I just, I just like step back, get into the, uh, go into the garden do my bits and bobs, let the world go by, try and exercise, keep fit. And, uh, yeah, just let me know when, you know, give me a thumbs up when we're good to go again. And yeah. then I'll, I'll, I'll come back out of the, uh, the den. Like, you know, it's as simple as that. So I'm okay, mate. I'm, the wife is fine. The, my two children are on uh, lockdown down in their respective university. So I'm here with my youngest, um, give them a bit of, gym sessions from time to time teaching him how to do weights properly and all that at the moment you be boxing uh, we had a little dust up in the garden a couple of weeks yeah. ago my, my jaw is still a bit sore from the straight <laughs> right he gave me <laughs> <laughs> in fairness <laughs> we got the gloves on got the helmets on uh, the head guards and uh, this is just sat watching shaking her head and we were on the uh, patio on the dust up like you, you're not you're not on social media, are you, Blakey? But that no. last one video, see, if you were the missus <laughs> recording, you guys have a little bit of a scrap. That go viral, you know. <laughs> yeah, as well. Me with my jaw as well. Yeah. I had I had to stop and say, okay, uh, okay, the old uh, I was a good shot. But then <laughs> spent the next two days doing with my yeah. jaw, trying to tighten it again because it was out of place a bit. But uh, no, yeah. mate, I don't want that going viral. No, no, no. Imagine, imagine if you chimed me and I went to sleep. Yeah, like, <laughs> like Wayne Rooney and Phil Bardsley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, right, that's not happening to me, mate. No way, no, no way. So you, you said your garden, your garden's like, my yeah. garden's tiny. Do you know what I mean? It's not much of a garden. Mm -hmm. But you've got, you've got mm -hmm. some land there, right? So you've been kind of, you've been busy? Yeah, we've got about four acres. So um, I've split it years ago, probably 15 years ago now, the two paddocks. So we've got a smaller paddock. And a large paddock, which I cut with the uh, with the mower, so tender. It takes me about uh, maybe about an hour and a half to do everything, uh, get it all tidy. So um, thinking about about a year ago again, a few few lambs, a few sheep, only about five or six. 
three or four or something like that. Um, got my CP license. Uh, so we'll see, mate. We'll see. I had a little moment the other day where um, I said to the wife, uh, I was I was coming home. I'd just taken my daughter's car around the block just to give it a, yeah, yeah. a kind of run. And um, coming up the lane and a couple of lambs started chasing the cat. They were, they were outside of the... Uh, outside the gates so I had to reverse shoe him back in but the one couldn't get back in so I lifted him picked him up lifted him over the gate which I'm sure he was thankful for but uh I come home and the wife was like oh lamb chops for dinner I was like, mm, can't really do that <laughs> it's, it's hard so, to catch uh, sheep though and lamb isn't it they're, they're nippy little things they yeah, are but he was he was obviously a bit distressed because his mate got back in the field somehow, but he couldn't, he was trying to go through the uh, gate, but he couldn't get in. So I just went and picked him up, had a look at him and then put him back in the, in the field. But then, uh, like I said, I haven't eaten lamb since, which is about 10 days ago. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to let that, let that wear off a bit, you know? Yeah. 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 But you, you love your sport though, don't you, to be fair. And it's not just football. So are you missing it on the telly? Oh, massively. I mean, um, you know, what do I watch? watch football? I'll watch the odd rugby game. I'll watch a lot of rugby league, uh, boxing, you know, watch boxing for fun, UFC, watch a lot of. So, you know, I tend to, yeah, my, not my life revolves around sport, but it's a big part of it. And uh, yeah. at the moment, with no uh, live sport, you don't mind watching the catch ups and stuff like that. But, it's it just shows when it's already decided. There's no sort of there's no so no significance. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, the you're, already, you're already, yeah, you already know the result. You already know who won the league. You already know who lifts the cup. So watching it, I don't get much of a kick out of watching. You know, yesteryear. It's probably what I'd, I've never watched anybody or any games when. Someone sent a YouTube clip the other day of, of, of some goals for Wales, and uh, I, I just don't look back. I, mean, yeah. I tend not to really reminisce uh, unless asked, to be honest with you. I, I just like live competition. It's the competition, I suppose, and trying to work out who's going where and whether they're going to be strong enough for the season or what have you. It's, it's more in the detail I enjoy. It's the beauty of um, unscripted, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Sport is unscripted. Absolutely, absolutely. You can you can be you can be top of the tree when it, like, we'll talk. We'll say Cardiff City, for example. You know, season and the worn up where they get promoted. The following season, you know, so so could have should have stayed up in my opinion. Didn't come back. Now, I've been in that situation myself two or three times through my career. And I know when people are saying, ah, we'll just bounce back. Well, I know how difficult that is. Mm. And I know the kind of characters you need. And I know if you haven't got those type of characters, it's going to be a struggle because now you've got a target on your chest and your back. So I think, you know, uh, a lot of people thought Cardiff would just bounce straight back. I thought it was going to be extremely difficult, especially, you know, I thought that, that race had been run, that, <coughs> excuse me, that surprise package of, you know, the old school, Neil Warnock, you know, direct football, that's not a surprise anymore. I mean, you, you, the season you went up, I remember predicting Cardiff would go up and beat Wolves, who we were flying at the time, right? Because I said Wolves, you know, the manager, Nino, he wouldn't have seen anything like that probably since he was playing. You know, and Cardiff went up and done them and uh, went on to get promoted behind Wolves, yeah, but they, they still got promoted. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the intricacies I love of sport, right? What, what would you say then, as you're talking about Cardiff City, what, what's your mm. kind of overall message for Cardiff City fans right now? This is going to, ha- you know, can City, can City get back to the Premier League or how many years would that take? It's not going to happen this year, that's for sure. Listen, uh, the overall, the first and foremost message is, is hello to you all and I hope you're well and staying safe and, you know, doing the social distancing and everything like that because... As we see, there are far there are things that are far more important than you know sport, you know. But uh, 
if we talk in sport, then you know the season kind of went where I was, I expected it to go, but the future, <clears throat> I don't know. You know, when you look at business and you look at uh, the owner, I don't think he'll be as rich a man as he was prior to COVID nineteen. I think there'll be many people, big businesses, corporations in that situation. Um, and then I read a statement a few, it might have been a few weeks ago or a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I'm not sure, where the chairman was saying about the um, the lack of transfer funds that were going to be yeah. because of uh, the situation, which is totally understandable. You know, these, are the, these are the situations that, why I, I always, you know, try and say when you're in there, do it to the best of your ability, be vigilant, and cautious, you know, when you've got the money, don't flout it. Don't just throw it away. Don't just, you know, oh, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. You know, have a philosophy and have a plan. And I think those two are the most important, which I don't think we've got either, if I'm totally honest. Uh, and that's my, that's my biggest bugbear for Cardiff. Cardiff City, capital of Wales, it should be, you know, they should be spending eight, nine, ten years in the Premier League. Okay, you know, you might have a season or two where you've taken a gamble or something happened, a couple of players got injured and confidence has slipped and you might fall out of the, the Premier League for a season or two. But overall, you come back, you get back in and you become a, like a constant. I think, you know, um, with the owner, the amount of money you spent, I never discredit him for the amount of money he spent. It's, it's more who he's given to and how they've spent it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's always been a problem for me. So with Neil Harris now, can you see his style kind of starting to come on the team? Could you see it before this all kind of locked down? Because he's different, he's a different kind of uh, style of play to, to Warnock, isn't he? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I I. I I speak a lot on my boot room show um, about continuity and about, you know, not having a manager who's all out offensive and then getting a manager who's all out defensive. All right. So I've spoken about that for probably two, three years, maybe longer because of the succession of managers and going from one extreme to the other sort of thing. And after Neo, it was, we had said plenty of times about, you know, you need a manager now to step the team forward. Uh, and I said probably two years ago when they go into the Premier League, someone like Chris Hutton, I thought was an ideal candidate. The way he carries himself, his professionalism, his name in the game is fantastic. He's played at the highest level. And, you know, he comes across quite strict, but plays, you know, you would say a bit more football, not a bit more, but not a lot more, somewhere in between than, say, a Neil Warnock. So it's progression. Mm. Uh, and his experience was fantastic. Neil, I don't, I, I don't, I didn't see that. I don't see that. And I can only speak as I find. I've seen, sometimes I've seen, you know, when desperate to get a result. And I know you throw everything at it, but the style of football was was Neil Warnock and then some, you know, uh, which was disappointing because you're looking for progression. But at the same time, you say, OK, the break, you say it's not his team. He's not got the players that he would like. Um, so you have to give him time. It's as simple as that. But the, then on the flip side of that, I looked at Millwall and looked at what Neil done in his five, six years, or let's say up until he was relieved of his uh, duties, and then you look at someone like Gary Rowett and what he's done, and Millwall was sitting above Cardiff, you know, and playing much better football than they had in the past two or three seasons. So you look and you think, well, you know, is, is that the answer there looking at you? There's the, there's, you know, break it down a bit. There's a bit of detail there for you to look at and analyse, you know. Uh, these were his players at Millwall, the players he wanted because he'd been there so long and he didn't have them playing to the standard that 
Gary Rowan has come in for six months and got them playing a lot better football. So leads you to the question, okay then, is he going to improve Cardiff to the next stage? I personally don't see how that's going to happen. Yeah, simply right. on history, right? Because it's not like five years ago, it's just like you know, six months ago. So I look at it and break it down like that, G, you know, and uh, not, listen, it's just an opinion at the end of the day. You like it or you loathe it, it there's nothing I do, you know. Everyone's got an opinion and everyone's entitled to it. So put it out there, say what you think. You're not against anybody. This is what managers hate when, oh, you know, a manager goes into a club and I remember it's the, speaking to a couple of Chelsea friends of mine and uh, the, the, the Dennis Wise situation because he didn't think Frank Lampard was the man for the job and, mm-hmm. you know, Frank and Jody got a bit upset and contacted Wisey and da 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 The rest is kind of history. But, you know, you've got to accept the criticism. You know, it's, it's kind of why I don't do social media, right? Because, you know, it's just an opinion. It's the, the, the criticism is just your opinion. It doesn't really matter to me. Sometimes it's, your criticism, what I would take on board and think, oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. And thanks for that. Do you know what I mean? But is it going to deter me from doing the job correctly? No. This is football. It's entertainment. It's what people love. It comes in many shapes and sizes. But... You know, there are certain shapes that are more successful than others. Uh, is, is there a part of you that thinks, oh, I'd like to know what people think of my opinion or not? Or you just don't care? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> no. Honestly. Honestly. I, listen, I, I take it as, listen, my, <clears throat> my affiliation to Cardiff is, is huge, right? And I look at it not just because I played for where I was born, but I was born in Ely. My family, you know, they're not on my mum's side. They're not Windrush generation. They've been here since, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, First World War. So my affiliation, my uncles and aunt, my uncles and auntie and my mum, they were known as the four flying Sullivans. Anyone who's in their 60s or 70s who went to certain schools may remember them. Um, my uncle went on to be a rugby league player, uh, famous. My cousin went on to play for Wales rugby. You know, it, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to us as Cardiffians. You know, if my grandmother was still alive, she'd be, you know, cartwheeling. She's probably up there now, cartwheeling at what we've achieved. So it, it, it's it's big. It, it's huge to me. Uh, the affiliation with the city. I just want the best for the. I just want the best for it. That's just it for my for the football club, and I think it can be better. I know you're not putting your hat in the ring as such, but did you ever consider coaching? I did at one stage. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I did my B license probably back in 2010, maybe 11. Um, but again, I quickly realised, looking around at friends of mine, um, there were friends of mine who maybe you know i would say their knowledge of the game was okay and they were in very good jobs and then there were friends of mine who whose knowledge was excellent and they couldn't get a job mm. and the the division the divide if you don't want to look at it you don't but often i would look and think well it just so happens that he happens to be black and he's not in the game. And again, another black person I know who's very good at and well known for in the game, playing days and can't get in, can't get in, can't get in. And you've got to you've got to look at that and evaluate and say, right, am I gonna spend ten years trying to kick this door down and hope that someone gives me an opportunity? Because listen, I'm an opinionated person. I have been since I can remember in junior school. You know, I've got an opinion, I'll say it. You know, and I'm not saying it to upset you or anything like that. It's just an opinion. So I looked at the game and thought, you know, and here we are, what, 2020, and there's 
still a total lack of black coaches and black managers. So I kind of think I took the right decision to pull away from it. And now I don't, what, what you have to do is like, a lot of people who are in academies and uh, 23s and coaching and what have you there, they, they harbor, I always say to, to friends of mine who are managers, be careful because everyone harbors the ambition to manage. Right? Every coach and a lot of coaches these days will do and say anything just to get up close to the first team, get up close to the first team manager. So there's a lot, you know, football's a dangerous game, mate. You know? mm -hmm. You've got to have eyes in every direction. And that's why managers keep their teams together, as in their coaching staff, because it's a massive trust thing. Because, you know, within the circle, you know, people who jump on you and celebrate and then run to the chairman and say, look, he's doing this, that, and the other. You know, so it's a, it's a beautiful game to watch, right? The end result, but getting there is difficult. So for me, I just, I just lost that sort of, that ambition. Or I, I didn't lose it. I let it go to yeah. want to be a coach or a manager because I recognize that, you know, the chances are very, very slim of you getting in. Uh, it's how hard do we address then, Blakey? How do how do we address this? Because you, you're spot on. Look at the stats. Mm. Chris Hilton, someone you mentioned there. Mm. You no, know, he's a fantastic manager. But there's potentially so many others. There's so many black yeah. players out there playing who obviously are not mm. getting a chance. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I, I think um, I, I don't think enough is done in the game. To be honest with you, G, I look at like the PFA, the LMA, the Premier League, the EFL, it, it all, they're all the same. You know, there's a little circle of people. And then I look at you know, some, of, uh, some of the people who are in the organizations, uh, some of the people of color, and I think, okay, yeah, I know that person, or I don't know that person, but I, I can hear what they're saying, and I can see they're genuinely trying to improve things. But then there's other people who, of colour who will, what I, I call them, drawbridge people. They get in the organisation and then they become like what's already there and like they're quite happy to be the token black person or the token Asian person because now I'm amongst the elite and I'm happy and you know, I've got what I wanted and blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's, it, it, there's, there's a lot of different, you know, ways it can change but you, you've got to genuinely want it and I, I honestly don't think the game genuinely wants it i think mm -hmm. it's racism has become sort of a token of something we can talk about to fill you know time space energy uh, i remember seeing on sky a few months ago maybe might be last year when they'd done this you know they had all black players saying oh we just want a chance we just want an opportunity and they've done this thing and they had Darren the, the black presenter from Sky presenting it and it was all very convenient and I'm like okay and what's been the outcome yeah it's good to do it for one but you need to follow that up right and push on. <laughs> yeah right and you know, you know places like Sky they, they're TV influencers they, they got the money you know if Sky turned around and BT turned around and said listen Unless you improve those statistics, we ain't back in the game. Because right? we don't want to be part of that. That's not a reflection of society. Yeah. Right? I remember you speaking to change. you a while back about... The speed of change. Yeah. I remember speaking to you a while back and you, you were telling me about uh, when you were racially abused in Chelsea. So how mm. much has things improved and how much is it to go in your opinion? Cause it's, it's quite sad for me to think that, you know, that you, you, you genuinely believe that it's not, it's not enough. I mean, it's just tokenism basically. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, well, it's, it's changed massively in some instances. Oh, I, okay. It's changed massively on the face of it. Player can come up to you during a game now and give you the N word. You know, that was regular when I was playing. Uh, you won't hear when I went to Wrexham to play. You won't hear five thousand fans chanting racist slur at you. Those things are, are gone, thankfully, out of the game. But it's the structures, the institutions, right? 
it's it's very it's it's quite it's a bit of a reverse psychology really because the institution says makes the ruling and says you've got to change you and your organization have to change you've got to do this and do that and do this and do that meanwhile when you look back at the organization that's dictated to you and you look at them and their boardroom <laughs> it's all one color right yeah it's all of one color you know I, you know you could say the welsh fa for instance right i don't know if there's any people of color in the committee yeah i don't think there ever will be you know maybe you might get a bit of tokenism there but you know, they're implementing and talking about things that you never suffered. You might understand to a degree, but you never fully understand. So wouldn't it be a sensible thing to have people who understand it, who can help you create the laws that surround the game and what have you, uh, to improve it, generally improve it? instead of the tokenism. That's how I look at a lot of it. Because I was talking about this at Chelsea when I was a 19, 20-year-old kid. Um, uh, racism, was, racism was around me every day as a five, six, seven-year-old kid. And now my kids are 21, 22, 23. And my daughter's doing, you know, a degree and, you know, part of her... Uh, this is about you know racism in the fashion industry mm. you know so and i guarantee she'll be saying the same thing and her kid will be her kids will be saying mm, do you think it's changed mum?" in another 25 years yeah. so it's become something that we just pass around and it keeps the order of the day that's that's my problem for me but you know black people as well black people they have to get they have to become united. I've said this for a long time. You have to become unionized. You have to become a one. Because, you know, nothing's ever been given if you're looking for change. It has to happen. It's, it always happens through one forcing the other to change. Yeah. You know, it never happens where the person at the top decides, okay, I'm going to relinquish a bit of power here and change to make it a better place. That doesn't happen, mate. Very, very rarely. I can't think of an example anyway. You're going to hate me for asking this question because I'm putting you on the spot. No, please, please, pass on. <laughs> so if... It's if, nice to talk to someone other than my wife and kid <laughs> <laughs> on the sheep next we'll door. We'll be in hours now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so imagine, right, Blake, if, if the FEW came to you, Blakey, and said, like, you know, okay, we'll, we'll offer you a job, mm. be on the board, mm. would that be of interest to you? Is that something you'd want to do? Well, it depends what the job entails, right? It's not, it's, I'm not a tokenist person. Yeah, this yeah. is what I don't understand. I've already, I've turned down opportunities where I know it's tokenism, right? Because when I say to you, okay, when I start to want to implement certain things, and I'm not saying I'm right and all this and all that, but about racism, I am, right? Because I've suffered it. I know it. My parents did, my dad did, my uncle did, my brothers did. My dad. So when you've got enough knowledge and experience of something, you know, it's difficult for people who have little knowledge and experience of it and to dictate to you. Yeah. Right? So it's then the speed of change. What do you want to happen? So before we go in, before I, was, before I would accept or decline the job, I would have to know all these things. What are your intentions? What are you trying to achieve? You know, are you genuinely thinking that? And then, you know, when you're, you're rolling out what you're trying to do, the drive, it's not like chaotic. It's not like, this is my opinion, it rolls over. Every situation is different, right, G? Every person is different. You know, some people will be, you know, genuinely all for it. Some people will be all for it, but generally totally against it. You have to work these people out. You know, it's... Uh, it's, it's not straightforward. And it takes years. It takes years. As I said about the, um, you know, like FIFA uh, and, and them trying to do things with, uh, what was the England game that um, they were getting uh, racist abuse and they oh, yeah. said no to FIFA and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, not, not Bulgaria, was it? We were there. Was it? I can't remember. You put me in the spot as well now. Um, yeah. 
Well, they were getting monkey chants, weren't they? Was it? Was it? Yeah. 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 It, 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 it was. It was. It was that anyway. But you know, a, a, a situation. Serbia. A situation like, it might be Serbia, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say. I apologise if it's not right, but let's say it's Serbia. So I, I said, well, someone said to me, well, what would you do? And I said, well, you know, first and foremost, rather than just say FIFA say to them people, right, I have a change or blah, 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 blah. You get top the game or fans close stadiums or whatever. I said, you know, you get a delegation. So someone like myself and, you know, a delegation of five or six people of black and white color, but understand racism. Mm. They go into that country and they help then to start putting things in places into the youth football systems and understanding why you can't say these things and understand the pain it causes to some people uh, and really start to get an understanding and, and try and make the, the, the younger generation understand that the older generation is going to be difficult to change. But what you tend to find is that my grandchild says something to my grandfather and my grandfather goes, ooh, ooh, sorry about that, right? You can't say that, granddad, that's, that's not allowed, right? So then you work with that country over a course of, say, two or three years. And then you report back to FIFA and if the delegation is happy with what's happening and the changes that are made, then they invite it back into the next World Cup uh, or the European Championship. But if not, you suspend it. Mm-hmm. Right, you suspend it from the next European and World Cup, so you, that gives you sort of like a four year, five year to improve things. If you get to that four years and the delegation comes back generally and says, Listen, they're not willing to change, it's not okay. And FIFA says, Okay, Serbia, you, you're out for the next two, and that will continue indif- indefinitely until we generally see change. Because I think it was the manager and the head of sport of the country come out and said, oh, oh, we didn't hear nothing. Okay, that's great, right? But again, FIFA linked with BT or Sky or something, you know, I'm a paying customer of Sky. Why am I a black person sitting at home and having to listen to that on my TV? Mm-hmm. That's, I don't pay for that. No. Right? No one thinks of that. There's millions of people watching that now of color who think raging. Some will go out angry, get into mischief, get into a fight, whatever, whatever. The knock-on effect is, is endless. But I should have to listen to that. The knock-on effect as well is people will go to pubs and talk about it and then they could fight right. because people don't right. understand why exactly. you're upset. Exactly, exactly. So the knock-on effect is huge. So FIFA should be working with sort of little delegations of people who are willing to go and try and help. Because I'm not saying to the country, ah, you know, just get rid of them. That would be their style of thinking. Mm. I'm saying, oh, you go there and you help them to try to understand how yeah. it is and why it's wrong and why, you know, at the end of the day, because when it boils down to it, you always say, like, I don't understand it. I do understand it, but I don't. I don't understand why you look at a man and think, oh, I'm better than him because he's a different color than me. Don't, I don't, never have. Yeah. Never, because ne- if, you know. Do you think, it, do you think, do you think that the fans chanting, they know what they're saying is wrong, but they're just doing it because others are doing it and they're just literally being kind of, just being completely stupid and not doing it. Had they been in a different situation of a stand, they would never do that walking down the street or do you think they actually believe it? Uh, I think they think they believe in it. But I always say, okay, you, whatever country it was, let Say there was a hundred of you dressed in black with hoodies and masks. Yeah. Pick you up, transport you to Lagos, take you to a football match, drop you in a stand, and chant now. Yeah. yeah. Now you're the minority. Yeah, yeah. Now there's a hundred of you and a hundred thousand black people. Chant your racism now and see what see if you're brave enough to actually do you do you mean it? All right? Because it's okay when you're in the majority to chant and sound big and uh, right. But things change when you're in the minority massively. Right? Be careful what you say. You know, you, you must have experienced. I've seen it when I'm in the Caribbean on holiday, and I see white people. They they're totally different. 
the attitude is totally different. They're so well mannered. So please, thank you. you know. And always a bit tetchy, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit tetchy because they think, oh God, I don't want to say or do the wrong thing, which is stupid if you just don't worry about it and you know don't have that sort of negativity about race in your bloodstream. You just get on and it's fine. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's all good. But... Um, no, I, I just think it, it, it often boils down to we're in the majority and we'll say and we'll do what we want. But I would say, okay, that's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. There's not, many, there's not many people who are as brave when they're in the minority as they are whilst they're in the majority. That's just human nature. And most of it's learned behavior. Right? Well, I would say all of it is learned behavior. It's only what you learn as a kid, what you hear parents saying and what's on your TV and all these influences, you know, whether you think it's right or wrong. Some people still grow up in an environment where they hear derogatory terms every day, but still grow up knowing it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Some people don't. Yeah. Well, let's so hope it deep, changes man. and I hope you continue to see that change. I've got to be honest with you. Um, yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope so. so I, I live in hope, my friend. I live in hope. Yeah. Let's talk about your career then, you and your boots. Um, yeah. when, whenever I oh, think, of, yeah, <laughs> whenever I think of you, right, there's there's two images. One of them is probably one you'd, you'd imagine I'm going to say, and one of them is probably not. Mm. So one is um, the Man City goal, obviously. So I get a flashback mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. and I remember being there watching mm -hmm. that goal go in. And the other one is mm -hmm. a random one because it was the first time I ever put a bet on in my life. I put a bet Ooh. on for, um, for Blackburn to beat Liverpool in the FA Cup and you scored a goal. <laughs> <laughs> remember that one? Okay, yeah. One on a half folly, kind of the edge of the box. Yeah, yeah. The box. yeah, difficult one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so like um, it was kind of, the cross came from the right. And then yeah, was, Per Franson. Yes, yes. Per Franson, my old Bolton teammate, um, down the right, like, went to cross it, but, done a little cut back and it was one of them one that just bounces in front of you but I'm on the angle so I've not only got to control it <clears throat> I've got to keep it down yeah. get over the top of it and it's bouncing so you've got to watch kind of the ball onto your foot and don't look at the goal you've got to know where the goal is in that in that situation know where the goal is know where you are by the lines and the advertising and things that are on the pitch and just go with your spider senses and yeah. Try and put it inside the near post. I won, a, I won about 50 quid that day. I was so chuffed. <laughs> okay. Um, I wasn't even old enough to bet. See, to bet the gambling's a mug game. Uh, I know, I don't, I, I, don't, okay. I don't gamble anymore. I've stopped. Be honest. Okay. Um, okay. I was going to say, I, I, I'm not the reason why you love to put a bet on now. No, 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 no. Well, you were, you were, you were. Okay. Uh, yeah. Student days, were they student days? Yeah, they were. Yeah. <laughs> How many goals do you remember then? Because obviously I've just mentioned that goal. You, now I've re kind of reminded you of it, you remember it. But what goals? When I say Nathan Blake, tell me what goals you remember you scoring. What goals? Uh, well, the Man City goal I remember because a lot of people talk about that. Um, the Liverpool goal for Blackburn, I remember that because uh, well, my best friend's a Liverpool fan. He never lets it go. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, a goal I scored at West Brom for Blackburn and there were about a thousand Cardiff City fans come to the game. That's always <laughs> a significant goal in my, in my head uh, because I still to this day never heard of anything like it. Uh, and it was a decent goal, but well, it was a good goal, but the, the fact that there was <laughs> West Brom fans at one end uh, Blackburn fans at the other end, and then a section of Cardiff City fans. It was like, huh? Yeah. That don't make sense. Did you know they were coming? But, no! Oh. I got off the coach. It was an FA Cup tie, I think. Uh, and I remember getting off the coach, um, and I seen a couple of the lads from, and it was like, it was like I was transported back in time to get off the coach as like a 19, 20 year old at Cardiff. And I seen a couple of faces, and I thought, I was like, oh, what, what, are you, what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. And they were like, oh, Blakey, the game's can our game was cancelled, so we thought we'd come and watch you. 
<laughs> so it's like, oh, okay, okay, how many of you there? It was like about, hey, about 20 lads in the back. Oh, and there's more lads coming, they're all coming over now, and blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, okay. I said, I'll get as many tickets as I can here. Yeah? I said, then uh, we'll, you know, well, the lads won't be having much family here and stuff like that. So you just have as many tickets I got I can get. So I got about 14 tickets somewhere, 15 tickets from the lads, gave them to them. Uh, just expecting them to obviously be amongst the, the family, the, the Blackburn family stand, wherever it was, yeah. at, uh, at the Hawthorns. And uh, then come jogging out the warm up, and it was like, it was about 600 of them, somewhere like that, <laughs> in a section. I was like, so kind of like, well, I've acknowledged them, like, I was like, and then a few of the Blackburn fan, uh, players, one of them, uh, Flitty, was the captain, Gary Flitcroft, said to me, what? what's, what's that all about? I said, mate, they're just nuts, mate. I said, the game was cancelled, so they were playing somewhere in the Midlands, I think Birmingham or something like that. It might have been Wolverhampton, but they thought, right, it's cancelled, we're going to watch Blake's. So they just come over. And he went, oh, all of them. I was like, mate, I said, listen, the club is different. The fans, they had genuinely different and uh we played and i think it was one of the reasons why i was never really loved up blackburn because i remember scoring the goal and the blackburn fans were behind the goal and the cali fans were over to the right and i scored the goal and ran towards the fans and off to the right and then celebrated with the cali fans which is wrong really but it was just like more of a it was it was a good goal i scored it was more of an appreciation yeah. And I felt energized by it. I felt it gave me like at the time when, you know, I, I wasn't really loving my Blackburn career. So it was, it was just like a, it was like a, a real big energy boost for me. Just seeing six, five, six hundred fans like, uh, from Cardiff. And they just, some chanted Nathan Blake songs all through the game. Yeah. They didn't, you know, if someone scored for Blackburn, they didn't cheer. <laughs> I, think we, I, can't remember, I think we won 2 1 or 3 1, something like that. But they didn't cheer, they just sat there. And then when like, I scored, they went crazy. You moved to Blackburn for like four, four million pounds, something like that, just over four million, mm. I think it was. Mm-hmm. And then obviously you, you had Wolves, you, you had Bolton as well. And you, by then you were playing in like proper stadiums, big stadiums like we see these days. Did you miss like Ninian Park? Yeah. Because Ninian Park was, it was dirty, it was intense, but it, it was it was our Ninian Park, and it was it was awesome. I think I think anyone who's played at Ninian Park for Cardiff, I speak to every uh, I speak to Eddie Newton yeah. every day, and there was, he sent me a picture yesterday actually of someone who put a picture on Twitter, and there's me, him, I think Chrissy Pike is in the image, uh, Andy Gorman might be in the image. But it's after a game in the dressing room. We just sat there. And he 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 just he's at Trabzon Sport now as the yeah. assistant, okay. doing really well. Uh, and he just he's, what a picture, what 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 memories like because uh, they, they they were just fantastic. And Ninian Park, just I'm old school anyway. Right, gee, if you if you offered me the new world or the world of what I work in, I. I'd take the old world, right? It's just yeah. too fast for me now. So um, <laughs> I just love, I always said, I don't want uh, okay, it might be planning issues and what have you, I understand that, you know, through business and what have you, but the redeveloped Ninian Park, um, you know, where there's only a few houses either side, you know, uh, the bus depot there, it's a lot of space. I just always thought myself, redeveloped Ninian Park, because its history is... Is uh, it's rivaled at you know big you know Anfields and places like that, but Ninian Park it, it, it's like an essential. It's 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 and it's close enough to the you know industrial estate and the the, the A roads where you can come in and, and and not really have a major problem with traffic. You know, you still could have had the car park where the car park is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and still walk across. So. Um, it's it, I. I just, no, I just, I'm blessed that I, I got to play there. I honestly believe that. I'm blessed that I got to play there, and I'm, I'm more blessed, and I treasure the goals I scored there. It, I really it's, do. 
is the Man City goal your favourite goal that you scored there? Or was there another goal that was more important? Your first goal, maybe, or, or your last goal? I don't know. I can't remember my first goal in the end. I really can't. I can't remember. And I, I can't remember. Someone put a, a clip of goals of mine on YouTube. And I've I seen it about four years ago. Um, but the goals on there, it's about a 15, 12, 15 minute video. But I had forgotten them, honestly. And there's some crackers on there. Even I was like, whoa, what a goal. Oh, what a dribble. Oh, what a strike. Mm. But I, I, I'd forgotten about them. I, I really had, uh, but uh, I just loved that place. I loved cleaning it when I was when I, when I come back from Chelsea and I was an apprentice. My job was the kitchen, look after the kitchen and the the tunnel. So I used to have to sweep the tunnel, yeah. make sure match days is Friday from Saturday match is clean. You know, all like bits of mud off your boots and all that. Clean the kitchen, I sweep the tunnel. I I just loved it. I, I hate the only thing I hate about Indian Park was when Bobby Smith would make us run for doing something wrong, and you had to run on the the, the gravel, so you couldn't like cut a corner at all. You had to run the edges. So that was the only thing I hated about <laughs> Indian Park was the track around the outside because it, it just did you caused me pain. Did you prank each other? So if you'd clean the kitchen or or you swept the kind of the tunnel, would someone deliberately sabotage that? And who would it have been? No, no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't like no. Your job's had to be done, mate. Yeah. You know, Bobby Smith was a hard taskmaster. He didn't mess about. Gruff old northerner, redhead, fiery. Yeah. You know, didn't take no messing. Had us all, whether we're and we're all could look after ourselves. Tough little cookies, but and myself, certainly Lee Stevens. Lee Stevens, that's a lovely Stevens. Me and him used to get on like a house on fire. His mum and dad used to take me in when I first started getting in the first team and we train in the morning and go to his. His mother doing like a meal and stuff like that. Stay, watch a bit of countdown with his dad in the afternoon and leave about, <laughs> <laughs> leave about half past four or five o'clock, go back to the game, get ready for the game in the evening. But uh, we had great times. No, no one sabotaged anybody because, um, you know, those were like, it was, like, was like your army chores. Like, you know, you, you, everyone's got to do their jobs. If it wasn't, then that's when you would get things like Bobby would say, right, who's on, like, your way dressing room? Okay, whoever mopped it, there's all mud streaks. You didn't wash the mop properly. Right, get on the track. Yeah. So then the boys would, whoever, right, get on. It was you doing the, it was you, oh, you know, I didn't do the mop in the day with so-and-so. I done the bathroom. So yeah, whoever so-and-so is, me. Look what you've done, look what you and the running was he had this run called Crash, mate. It was ridiculous. Really? Five five laps in like four minutes, four and a half minutes, three laps in uh, four laps in three and a half minutes, three laps in two minutes, two and a half minutes, two laps in two ten, something like that. It's you and know what the right? five seconds. And if you miss one, you gotta go again. Yeah, can you imagine the Premier League footballers these days doing that? They, they wouldn't have it, would they? No, 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 no. Not even the youth, I don't think, would have it. No. I don't think the youth teams would have it, you know? <laughs> they, would think, they would complain about the amount of running because, I mean, it's all a lot of, lot of science now, isn't it? But mm. take it all the running you lay in there because you're going to need it. But no, I... Uh, Ninian Park was Ninian Park, Burnham Park. All right, loved both of them, and they were they were both falling apart. In fairness to them, but yeah. uh, you know, Bramall Lane was oh, the Bramall Lane was a lovely place, but it was, it was, it was nice. Uh, Burnham Park it only had three three sides, one rubbish little stand in the corner, and then you had like the some sort of supermarket or something like a brick wall as behind the goal. So both old stadiums, but if from Cardiff, born in Cardiff, like I said, <laughs> the significance of the family, you just, you just love, love Indian Park and scoring goals there. Mate, you know, the memories of different goals and different games, 
if I see a clip, I can remember it. You know, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, it comes <laughs> but, back to you like that. Yeah, yeah. But often, I, I'll I'll see a goal and I, I won't remember that. I don't remember doing that. The only thing that convinces is me is as a video, and I can see myself. But otherwise, yeah. I, I don't remember that goal because yeah. they're the little goals in between. You know. You had some. You had some cool hair in them days as well. Yeah, man. I used to love a hairstyle. I used to love a. Uh, that's that's why I keep it shaved now, mate. Uh, <laughs> uh, different colours and stuff like that. Take a dye in it. Uh, yeah. Do a, I used to have a tinting, but just a little tuft at the front and all the rest shaved. And, mate, I went through all sorts. The funky dreadlocks like my son's got now. I went through that stage at Sheffield United. Colouring my hair, a Bolton, just uh, just non-stop, mate. Non-stop. Talk, let's talk about Bolton then. You just mentioned it. The playoffs. You had playoffs with Wolves as well, right? You went up with that with Wolves. Yeah, we never got. We didn't do playoffs. We just we broke records and went automatic with Bolton. Nah. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that a special time with Colin Todd there? Because oh, he seemed like a good group. Hugely. It's it's funny the similarities in like Colin Todd and Eddie May, both really like don't mess about with them kind of people. Uh, not strict, but would let you understood footballers. You know what I mean? You yeah, yeah. can take the mick, but you can really have a laugh. Um, so, so there's a lot of similarities there. Two old stadiums, a lot of similarities there. Uh, Tony Clemmo, Rick Wright were the, were the chairman when I was at Cardiff. Uh, Gordon Argreaves, lovely, lovely dude at, at uh, Bolton. Gone with him really well, so there was a lot of lot of similarities. Uh, the only difference is one is a city, and one is a, a large town. But um, wonderful place to be, Bolton. Just the people, absolutely superb. Honestly, uh, just good old fashioned, you know, Lancashire down to earth people. Simple as that. And Bolton was like a his own little city sort of thing. You know, they had everything going for it. You know, you had like restaurants you could eat and uh, going to the Ritzy on a Saturday night and stuff like that. And, you know, a few clothes shops you go to, Norton Barry, I think one of the clothes shops and the lads just do all the gear. So it was, it, 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 it was, it was a great, it was a comfort. I never lived in Bolton. Never, never, never lived anywhere where I played. Never lived in any town or city I played I always lived where outside, do, you, but, where do uh, you always live where you are now and travel back and forth no I lived in uh, Cheshire uh, in a place called um, near Warrington it's called Appleton Thorn it's just right on the edge of the M6 a lovely little village there um, but it was just more accessible easy access up the M6 to yeah. the ground and the training ground and then easy accessible for if my wife or myself wanted to jump on the motorway and go home, it was literally a, a, a five-minute journey to the to the motorway. But you were you were in the countryside, but nice village, and then lovely little uh, village called Stockton Heath, where you go and have like like wine bars and meals and stuff like that. It was, it was just a lovely little place, a little place. Is it around Alderley Edge that area you're talking about? Yeah, Sorry no, that's there. the other side. That's the other side. That's where all the um, that's where the 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 wannabe posh folk live. Ah, I say I, I was you know the, I, I'm not one of them. Uh, no, it's Cheshire. Listen, it's all I, nice, I, isn't it? I go into Wilmslow. I used to love going into Wilmslow for a meal. Or I spend a lot of time with Ashley Ward, Wardy. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine, uh, and he lived out that way. But it was it wasn't for me. It was just the, the mentality of people is just it's just not me. I'm not. A, I'm not posh. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I'm not. I can. I can sit amongst any folk, but you know, I'm not posh. And they, they do money makes you think differently. Yeah, and if you've not come from that, <laughs> and you remember you, you're, you're in touch with your roots. It's. Uh, it was wasn't wasn't for me. I preferred the other side. 
I'm just glad you said that and not me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, it's wait, it's difficult to call yourself posh when they look at your background. You're born in Ely, the brother of England. Yeah. There's, there's no one you're going to convince you posh. Yeah, there's just, nothing wrong with any of that. Nothing wrong at all. Hey, before we wrap up, um, when do you reckon we'll watch football again? What, what do you think will happen? And you think we should just crack on and play behind closed doors? And if you were a player, actually, Blakey, how would you feel about this? Would you want to be going back? Like, what would be going through your brain? Um, I, I would, I would want to go back. Yeah, because you know, you, you enjoy the, the the camaraderie with the lads in the dressing room and what have you, what have you. But at the same time, um, I put life before football, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if 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 the recommendation is uh, to start back, fine. But I, sport is not the same without fans. You know, it's something I say, they're the one constant. In football, they can't change clubs or whatever you think. So the, you have to really look after them. Mm. Because I watched the UFC about, must be about four weeks ago now. Yeah. And there's no fans. And, yeah. and it, you could hear them breathing and, you know, grunting and punching. And it's just like, shit, my son, this is like, it's a good card, but it's just rubbish without the fans. Yeah. And football's the same. Like, you know, it's, it's seen as a punishment, right? It's FIFA's punishment. If you do this when you're not allowed to have fans in your stadium for the next four games. So, you know, I, what I don't want to see is it rushed because, uh, you know, we've got to finish this fixture. We've got to, you know, think outside the box. And if it means you have to write the season off, then so be it. But, you know, if the, the knock-on effect should be everybody is in the same position, right? It shouldn't be like, right, people not earning money and, okay, everything's frozen, but you have to pay a mortgage. Mm. No, everything should be frozen, right? Because no one knows what's going on, where we are, what's happening. Everything should be frozen. You know, add the mortgage payment under the back here, uh, 20 years, 10 years, or if you've got one in your case, gee, I don't think you have a mortgage. <laughs> but you understand what I mean? So, you know, just right, right now, have some, you know, they're telling the world stop. So make it stop all around and then, We'll figure out what's the best way to start again, and if it's finishing the fixtures, fine. I'm 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 quite happy with that. If it's you know you have to let the season go, it'd be disappointing for people like Liverpool. But mm -hmm. if someone like Norwich, it's great, you know. Uh, and we start again, then so be it. If you can finish the season, great. But you know, they they're gonna have to work out the plan of the knock-on effect for a long time because. Uh, yeah. You know, you go back to pre-season training usually in July. The season starts in August. You know, um, the thing what, is, you've, what you've had is a rest. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's the beautiful thing, right? So you don't have to worry about overexertion. You have to worry about how it's all going to fit and the knock-on effect of like European Championships and World Cups and Olympics and World Championships in sprinting and what have you. So... You know, those are the things going on forward in the future, you have to think. What, what I'm hearing a lot of is Liverpool fans saying, you know, well, you know, we're only two games away from winning the league. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you are, but you still need to win them two games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sense I'm not a yeah. Liverpool fan. Um, yeah. But, like, Finn, if they, if, if they, you know, if they, they get given the league, what do we do with the relegation aspect of it? And if we don't relegate teams from the Premier League I'm talking about now, then if Leeds, for example, or somebody else win the championship, they can't come up. And that's, that's the main prize, right? Yeah, and, and right. It, and, and this is what I said to my, my mate who's a Liverpool fan the other day. I said, like, I said, it either have to all complete or all non complete. There's, mm. not, there's not like the Premier League completes and Championship doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can't do that, right? Because the knock on effect then is then, you then get into the lawsuits, right? Because mm. Leeds United could sue the Premier League because, or the FA or wherever, because they were allowed to finish, we weren't. Uh, the value of that promotion is worth this to us. You know, it's worth that to Norwich. They get to stay in and get an extra, 
So this is what I say. Either everyone does or everyone doesn't. But you can't have, I suppose it's, it's the problem we're having two organizations in your league, right? The, the FA and the Premier League. Because they've got different agendas. So there's, to me, whatever happens, you can't single out the Premier League. Because my mate was saying, oh yeah, but you know, I think, you know, and he's a Liverpool fan. Oh yeah, but I think we should, you know, we, we you know, just finish, just let the Premier League finish that. You know, we can't do that. You know, it's not fair. You know, and if it does finish, well, what's the point? Because, you know, you're only playing for the winners because you don't get relegated. So you don't have to play. Don't worry if you're Norwich or whoever else is down the bottom. So, because the championship is not completed, so you don't know who would have come up. So, you, you know, if you're going to go there, I think that'll, that'll create a lot of negativity, a lot of angst if you only finish the Premier League. And I, I just don't see how you do it anyway. You're going to have to compensate people. But then again, the money is not the money the fan wants. The, the fan, the Leeds fan wants to be playing against Man United again. He yeah. doesn't want 100 million as a, as a, as a, you know, a payoff. He, he doesn't want that. He wants to see his team against Man City. He wants to see his team against Liverpool. He wants to see his team against Man United. Be away day, don't they? He wants to see a team against Crystal Palace, she wants to see a team against, you know, Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, you know, they, people want to see the teams at the top fly. It's as simple as that. So it's, it's listen, it's, it, there's a lot of work that's going to have to be, I hope it's being done behind the scenes, but you're going to have to think about it. But the knock on effect, I don't know. Who knows? Well, Blakey, Gerard, hey, thank you so much for your time today. Maybe. Um, I love chatting to you. You know I do. And hopefully next time we see each other, it will be um, face-to-face and in person. Yes, man. And we'll do some of uh, that DA as well, Rick Astley. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep it like this, just so you can do it. I'll clip it up for you. No worries. No worries. I'll clip it up for you. Show it back inside, no problem. I'll even fade it for you. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Blakey, you're an absolute right, legend. Man. Love you a long time, buddy. Pleasure, G. Take Cheers. care, bro. Bye-bye, man. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye.